Okay, so uh, I know we've been doing a lot of small format topics lately, and I plan to go back at some point and discuss, I guess, other avenues and ideas related to them and maybe some different things, but to take a break so that I don't burn out and uh, others don't burn out or think I'm a one-trick pony, uh, I'm going to branch out a little bit today and start a new ongoing series. Uh, we're going to be covering, uh, if you can't tell from the chart already, Corbin Russell uh, large format interchangeable core. Um, going back a bit though, I've gotten some feedback on the small format pinning method that I discussed in the last video and uh, all of it was positive so that's good. Uh, I even heard from one person on Reddit who says they were taught the same method many years ago, uh, many years before I even uh, stumbled upon it so that's good. Apparently there are other people out there in the same line of thinking so that's always, uh, I guess, reassuring that I'm not crazy. Um, today we're going to be kind of doing the same thing, but for Corbin and Russ, when we're going to be going over um, the methods and, and requirements of developing a pinning chart for one of these, um, I'm, I'm going to show you two methods. The first is the way that everybody pretty much does it, and then the second method is, uh, again, going to be kind of like what I did with the small format, and I'm going to show you my madness behind it. And I, I think the method that I use, and again, I'm not saying I created this one either, but I think the method I use is the fastest way to create one of these large format uh, pinning charts for Corbin Russ one. Uh, just doing not only Corbin Russ one, but best and, and other interchangeable cores uh, day in and day out. You do hundreds, thousands, whatever. You just kind of figure out a way that works best for you or a way that you can streamline things so that you can get through stuff faster. Um, this chart in front of me uh, is one that we made over at lockreference.com. Uh, free to download, free to use. Uh, we don't charge anybody anything to see or promote stuff. It's, it's all there for the betterment of the community. Um, this chart, you can go to lockreference.com. You click on Tools, uh, then you select Pinning Worksheets, and then the second tab is Corbin and Russ one, and that's where you're going to find this, uh, this chart. It's the only one we've got really for them because uh, there's not much to these. Um, I mean, you don't, like I said, have to use this, but it's there for you. Um, in addition to the pinning chart grid array, whatever you want to call it at the top, I've, uh, we've also included uh, the combinating rules for it. Uh, it tells you how to determine your top, build up, master, if present, and the bottom pins, uh, depending on your key cuts. And then we even took it a step further. We gave you an example pinning chart. In this case, it's a uh, Z-Class System 70 uh, depth system. Uh, and there's some control top master key, which is TMK, and then the change key, and just kind of shows you how to go through it. Um, but I'm also going to show you how to do that today. Like I said, two methods. One's the way that I, I believe that most people are taught, and the, the second's the way that I do it. Uh, not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying that the one I use is, I don't know, just works best for me. It makes me go faster. Uh, and one other thing we've got on the website, if you go to the library section and click on... Um, locks and then cores and cylinders, you've got the original uh, Corbin Russ one cylinder manual that A.J. Hoffman put together many years ago. And actually, I don't know if you can read this, uh, but this pinning chart and actually the example that I'm going to show in this is is straight from that book. Um, and, and I've adapted the rules that he, he mentions. And we're going to go through uh, first the method that he and Billy Edwards describe in Core of the Matter. And then I'm going to kind of show you, like I said, my method, which is pretty much like theirs, but it's one little nuance I think makes things faster, but we're going to show both methods. Uh, I don't want to sound like a broken record. Um, we're going to go over a Corbin Rustwin cores in greater detail when we pin one up. Um, but for now, I'm just going to show you a few items and minutia that matter as it relates to creating a pinning chart for them. Now, as opposed to small format, Corbin large format, uh, they have a control shear line that only exists in certain chambers. Uh, specifically from the bow, uh, it's chambers two, three, four, and five. Um, and if you can see right here, uh, six pin is standard, but seven pin cores are available. Uh, and that two, three, four, and five, which you can see I've got spaces for build up pin, those, those control chambers uh, stay the same no matter if it's a six or a seven pin core. Uh, for six pin cores, chambers one and six are keyed in a conventional manner. Uh, in a seven pin core, it's one, six, and seven. So you're just adding another one to the end, as you can see right here. 
Um, if you're familiar with Corbin and Rust when their key classes and their depth systems, you'll know that they have both .509 and .552 plug diameters available. Uh, in conventional Corbin large format, uh, all the plugs are going to have that .509 diameter. Now there are high security versions that use the .552, but again, that's that's not really the purpose of what we're doing today. We're just going to show you the standard uh, key and depth systems uh, that you would normally expect. Um, I do see that in the Corbin and Russman cylinder manual that AJ put together that he or perhaps someone else included um, the build-up pins necessary for interchangeable core for the .552 plugs. Now I've never run across that. I I've asked a few people that do or have done a lot more work on Corbin than I have. They've never encountered it too. So I don't know if it exists in a conventional method. Uh, all I'm going to say is I've never seen it, and uh, if you go by what's in core of the matter, apparently 509 is the standard, but here nor there. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't care. Um, so back to the differences. As opposed to small format, there's no true coded difference between the shear lines, uh, and that's because of the numerous key classes and depth systems that Corbin and Russ, when before they merged, had. Uh, in small format uh, A2 systems, for example, it's, it's a 10. In other words, the coded distance between the operating shear line and the control shear line is 10, um, which in an A2 system is 0.125, or basically an eighth of an inch. Uh, so when you read about this, maybe you already know. Uh, if you do, you're going to know that there's no one formula associated with this per se. Uh, that can be used to generate this because of the numerous key classes and, and depth systems. And once you learn more about this, you'll learn that rather than attempt to make a formula for each of the systems, and there's 11 of these by my count, uh, Corbin and Russell decided to make a uniform approach. And what I mean by that is they set the coded difference between the two shear lines of conventional cores to zero. Uh, or 0.163 inch. Uh, zero is the same for all key classes and depth systems. Doesn't matter uh, if it's Z class, system 70, pre system 70, increment size, key class, none of it matters. It's all set to zero because the core, uh, the form factor, the size of it's going to be the same no matter what key class and depth system you have. It's that 0.163 between the two shear lines. So, the relationship between the control key cut and the plug total, or at least the deepest cut, causes this number to fluctuate. So no matter the depth system or key class, if my control key cut, for example, is two increments deeper than the plug total, or like I said, the deepest cut, I'll need to compensate for that by adding to that zero. In other words, my, my control key cut is dropped lower than, say, and that's a terrible drawing, but you get the point. My control key cut is dropped lower than the bottom pins plus the master pins if they're present. And so in order to do that, I need to add to that zero. Well, since zero is the basis, I need to add increments to that. And that's fully dependent on the uh, depth system. I mean, it could either be 0 0.014, 0 0.015, 0 0.028. They have a lot of them. But the point remains, in order to uh, compensate for that distance, I need to add increments to that base or that uniform stack. Well, I'm sorry, not uniform stack, but that uh, uniform distance between the two. And I mean, if you think about it, it it's really genius um, because they're able to create it to where, like I said, throughout all the different key classes and depth systems, we don't have to learn 11 individual um, formulas. We only have to learn this one that we're gonna do right now. Um, and I know I just went over a lot. If you're new to this, it's, it's going to be maybe foreign or confusing or maybe even overwhelming. But I hope it'll make sense as we run through these charts. Um, but I just kind of wanted to point out the basis of it and, in my opinion, the genius of it. it, it this, as opposed to small format or Sargent or Medico, which doesn't even use build-up pins, uh, I, I think Corbin Russell's the, the by far the easiest to figure out, pin up, and learn. Um, but that's my opinion, you know what they say about those. Um, but anyway, let, let's go ahead and start working through this and, and trying to show you uh, how this all works. Um, 
So for just like A2, the bottom and master pin are keyed up in the conventional method. That is, the shallower of the two cuts gets the bottom pin, and the difference is uh, between the shallowest and deepest cuts in a corresponding chamber, uh, the difference gets accounted for in a master pin. So in, in chamber one, we've got one and three. Well, one's obviously the shallowest, and we add two. That'll be our master to get to it. And the next one, we've got a two and a four. Two is the shallowest, we're gonna add two to it. And the next one, we've got three and five. Three is the shallowest, add two it, two to it. Uh, the next one uh, is two is the shallowest, so we'll add two to get to the four, which is the deepest. Uh, again, we're just kind of going through basic master keying, like I said in the last video. If, if you're not familiar with this, you probably need to brush up on it because not only is this going to compound on the fact that you maybe don't know Corbin Western already, but if I'm throwing something else at you, it's, it's going to make things a lot more confusing. Um, so going back to this, I'm in the fifth chamber now, uh, two and six, which means two bottom, four master. And in the last one, we've got two and then four, so we had a two to get to it. So we've got our bottom pins uh, and master pins already figured up. Now, our chart we do for, for seven pins in case you ever ran into it, but if you're just using seven pins to avoid confusion, you just go ahead and cross these out since we're not gonna be using it. Um, now for um, the buildup pins, the, um, well, I guess we'll, we'll focus, finish up on the non-conventional ones. No matter uh, what your pin stack is or pin height, is in the non-conventional chambers, you always use a 0.247 inch uh, top pin. Uh, that, that's standard across the board. Uh, Corbin also requires you to use not only for the conventional chambers, but also the control chambers, their own spring. Uh, part number for that, if you, if you care, is uh, 172F21-7. Uh, we use them in the shop. We, we always try to follow manufacturer specification to the T if we can. Uh, if, I would advise you to do the same, but I will say if, if you truly wanted, you could use a conventional spring. Uh, we've definitely pulled them apart where they've been used and, and appears to work. So uh, use at your own discretion. Now in Core of the Matter, when they show you how to pin these up, they do what we just did first. They show you how to determine the bottom and master pin and then go ahead and fill that out for the uh, corresponding boxes in the chart. Uh, the next thing they go towards is the buildup pin. And the way that they determine the buildup pin is in this, you have to carry this out exactly. It's the control cut, and I've got this already on here, but it's out of the frame, so you're not gonna be able to see it. Control cut minus plug total. Now, there are examples of where such a formula will give you positive numbers as well as negative numbers. Now this goes back to what I said about the coded difference between uh, the two shear lines being a zero. So when you get a negative number, you're subtracting two increments. For example, if we got a, a negative two, we're subtracting two increments from that zero and we'd have a negative two buildup pin. Uh, so in the first one, we've got uh, in our first rather control chamber, uh, we have a two, which is our control cut, two minus, and in the second one, it's the plug total. Uh, so I can either look at these uh, numbers or I can just go ahead and add this up. So two minus two plus two is four. So two minus four is gonna get me minus two. Okay, so because the control is two increments, um, I guess higher, and you'll see that it can share the same cuts as the control, but I don't want to complicate things further, but if you figure that out, yes, that is fine, and yes, that will work. Um, but uh, in order to get to the control shear line, we're going to need, at least as it relates to the deepest cut being a four, we need to take two increments off of that zero to allow the control key to raise the pin stack right at the control shear line. Now we go into the second one, it's the same thing. Control cut is a three minus the plug total, which is three plus two is five. Three minus five gets us again, negative two. Uh, moving on, we got a six. Six minus two 
2 plus 2 is 4. 6 minus 4 gets us plus 2. And, and then in the last one, we've got 3 minus the plug total of 4 and 2, which is 6. So 3 minus 6 becomes minus 3. So there are our build-up pins to get our control key uh, cuts to lift the pins up to the right shear line. And then very simply, on the top pins, uh, the top pin length uh, just has to correspond to the control key cut. Uh, so in this case, um, in that particular chamber, we have in the second chamber two, so that's our top pin. Uh, third chamber is a three, so that's our top pin. Fourth chamber is six, so that's our top pin. And then the fourth chamber, I'm sorry, the fifth chamber is a three, so that'll be our top pin. And just like that, we've, we've assembled a uh, large format Corbin Russwin pinning chart. Um, now that's uh, the method that they teach in Core of the Matter. Nothing wrong with that. I did that method for many years. Uh, what I'm going to show you is a, uh, a different method that I use. I think it's a little bit more streamlined. Let's see if I can lift the camera out. Okay, yeah, for the most part. Okay, so same thing. We're going to do like we did last time. I'm going to agree with that method, and, and it adheres to my method, not trying to toot my own horn, but... Uh, and that we're going to find out the bottom and master pins first. So we've already done this, but shallowest cut determines your bottom pin. The difference between shallowest and deepest cut, uh, that number becomes your master pin. In this system, at least, I guess I should preface, this is a Z-Class System 70. Uh, now, if you're going to be working with other systems, I hope you know the rules and the, the increment numbers and sizes and all that. But for in this case, what I just said applies. Uh, so again, I'm just going to go through it real quick. One, two, two, two. 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4, and 2, 2. Now, last time we went for the build-up pins uh, after the bottom and master. I'm going to ignore that for now. I'm going to focus on the top pins. So in the non-control chamber, I know that's a 0.247. Now, what I'm going to do is, rather than, like I said, find up the build-up pins, I'm going to go ahead and fill this out. So it'll be 2 three, six, three, which is what we had last time. Now here's my method and here's how it differentiates. And you may love it, you may hate it, you may think I'm stupid, but this is how I do it. Uh, if you add these two numbers and then assume this is a, a an unknown quantity or an X and this is your sum, two, well, what number would cause two plus two or four what number would cause this plug total of four to get to two? So four plus something equals two. Well, four plus negative two gets you there. Uh, same thing over here, three plus two is five. Five plus something gets me to three. Well, again, five plus negative two gets me three, so that's that one. Uh, the next one, two plus two. Two plus two plus another number gets a six. Well, 2 plus 2 plus 2 gets us 6, so it's a positive 2. And then finally, 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus another number to get us to 3. Well, that's negative 3. So this is basic algebra, I guess, in my method, and I just find it faster uh, than trying to, because what happens is if you go for your build-up pins first, you kind of have to drift your eyes back and forth, and I've got it written up here to be as conducive as possible, but you kind of have to pay attention to your control key cuts while you're doing this math. So for example, um, I got a two uh, minus four gives me negative two and so on and so forth. Um, but it's just one thing to keep in mind. I try to keep my eyes as focused on what I'm doing in front of my work as opposed to going back and forth from key cuts and all that. If I can just figure it out it, it, using basic math in front of me, um, that's what I prefer to do. But like I said, it's up to you if you want to do it. Uh, both methods I taught you, regardless of the, the uh, key class or depth system, is going to work. Uh, these are all pinned up the same. Well, I guess the pinning charts all created the same. Uh, different pinning uh, kits are needed, and we'll go through that when we pin uh, some I've got uh, we've got four here for four different key classes and depth systems so uh, we don't quite have the 11 but we've got a good number of them enough that I can kind of show you around but for now 
that's the basics of, of the design behind, the, I guess, the theory of pinning these up and how you do it. So there's two methods. Uh, nothing to these once you get, I guess, the rhyme and reason behind it. it. This is very easy stuff. This is so much simpler than small format. Small format, we've got to memorize uh, um, the plug total, you know, either 23 for A2, 16 for A3, or 14 for A4. We've got to learn formulas like, for example, the traditional buildup is control cut plus 10 minus plug total. That's the buildup pin, so on and so forth. With that, we don't. Or with Corbin and Russell, we don't. We can just use the control key cuts as they are and, and do some basic uh, addition and subtraction from each of them. I uh, don't have to memorize any any sort of arbitrary numbers, I guess you could say. But uh, it's been 20 minutes now since I started, so it's run a little long, longer than I thought it would be. But that's basic Corbin wrestling. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to help you. Like I said, you've got the pinning chart or the pinning uh, worksheet available at our website. Also download the uh, Corbin Russell cylinder manual. We also have that hosted at lockreference.com. That, uh, by many accounts, is the Corbin Russell Bible. And it'll go over what we just went over and then some. And it'll contain all the key classes, all your depth systems. I mean, it'll answer every question you can think of. I've never had a question that that couldn't immediately answer. Uh, and I guess that's why they call that the Bible. But uh, that's it for today. Next week we'll be going over how to pin one of these. But until then, appreciate the views, appreciate the support. See you then.